Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now today we're going to take a look at the astrology for April 2021. And this is through the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So if you don't know your sidereal Vedic moon sign or ascendant sign, then I suggest you hop on the link in the description below and find that out. And that way you'll be able to make the most of the mini readings that I do. And I do those mini readings at the very end. This time we're going to focus on Jupiter and Mars because that's where the big transitions are. So we will feel a shift in energy when it comes to Jupiter and Mars this month. So that's why I'm focusing on those two planets. Uh, we've got a shift with, you know, the faster moving planets as well, moving from Pisces to Aries. But I think that's uh, Venus, Mercury, Sun, you know, but that's kind of more in the personal, individual side of things. We're not going to notice too much of a shift there, I, I don't believe. So I'm really focusing on Jupiter and Mars. And that's also what keeps the mini readings mini. <laughs> and before I get stuck into those, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a news matchup of what's been happening recently this month in March and see how that matches up with what's been going on in the sky. It has been a very interesting month and I can't wait to get stuck in. Now, as always, you can look at the description below and I have jump links. So feel free to just click on that, jump around to the bit that you would like to watch and yeah that's it and please do subscribe thank you for everyone who has subscribed um thank you to all the new subscribers as well i think you'll find this to be a really nice community all right let's take a look at recent news and what's been going on so i am still here in sydney australia i am very much uk based but i'm just down here because of lockdown and all that type of thing so while i've been here I've been experiencing all this rain every single day for the last, I've lost count how many days now. It has just been, we've had sheets of rain every single day. It's been, it's just, uh, wow, this is too much. And I do remember 1986. I do remember being a kid and there was something like 10 days in a row of solid rain. And this has been just like that. And I remember last year, some of the farmers of Australia wrote in to me and asked me a question. They said, look, could you tell us when are we going to get some rain? Because we really need rain. It has been far too dry. And at that time, it was 9th October 2019, I published and I'll put a link uh, so that you'll be able to take a look at that video. I published a video all about this. When are we going to get some rain? Because, you know, one of you lovely people out there asked me and I discovered that, well, I think we're definitely going to have rain when Rahu Ketu axis shifts into Taurus and Scorpio. And I did some research and I thought this could be just as big as what we had happened in 1986. I discovered that we're going to have some floods. Now, a couple of episodes ago, I talked about this prediction and I actually said that I got the prediction wrong because at that time, two or three weeks ago, however long it was, we didn't have this rain. And I thought, yeah, I guess I got that prediction wrong. It turns out the prediction is right. It's just that I was several months late. So why was I so late? Now, before I talk about why I was late, I'm just gonna get a grab from that video and put it in here so that you can watch and see what I had to say at that time. These are crossing the Gandanta point, so in particular here, the Gandanta point here, when this movement is happening in these early phases here, could be floods. So that's something that we've got to keep our eye on. And okay, so as you can see, what I thought at that time was that when Rahu Ketu axis go over Gandanta points, that is when we're going to have this absolutely massive rain. We're going to have floods, in fact. I was quite confident that it was the Gandanta points that would trigger it because drowning and flooding and all that kind of thing is always associated with Gandanta. But actually, when we look at, say, for example, an Aries ascendant chart, just to get a general feel for how the planets are moving, we notice that there were still a lot of planets and the heavy outer planets were still in fire sign Sagittarius. So now that all of those three, and I'm looking at Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn, now that they've 
cleared out of that firehouse and they've gone into earth, we're really just running a lot of uh, earth energy. And yes, now Ketu is in that very watery place and, and very established here in Scorpio. Now the floods are here. So this also got me thinking about this concept of speed that I never associate the word speed with the heavy outer planets because to me from earth perspective they're always slow so I never associate speed with the outer planets but then if you were to look from Pluto's point of view these outer planets that I consider outer planets they become inner planets from Pluto's point of view and they're actually very fast and what I discovered as I was looking at this was that yeah the prediction it turns out it is correct but some planets just needed to pick up a bit of speed and establish themselves and especially you know earth energy and now Ketu with all you know in, in Scorpio all this water uh, this is the time for flooding so it's been a really amazing learning point for me the other thing I can say about a prediction is and I've talked about this on the channel before as well but when one of you asks me, you know, what do you predict or what do you think about such and such? That's actually quite special and that forms part of the prediction because I would never have looked this up if it wasn't for, you know, one of you lovely people out there who asked the question. So you're part of the prediction as well. You're part of the creation of a prediction as well. It's, it's very important. So I've learned a whole load of things, but it turns out that the prediction is correct a few months late but that's not too bad um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about and match up with what's been happening lately is the big bombshell interview which I still have not seen it's the Harry and Meghan Markle interview so why don't we get into it why don't we do a bit of cosmic gossip you guys know I like a bit of cosmic gossip now and then so I still haven't seen this interview and I'm really looking forward to seeing this interview. We don't have a smart TV here and in England I do have one and I'm able to like go on the TV and watch something that's pre-recorded from you know weeks ago but I don't have that ability here so I'm waiting for it to come for free on YouTube somewhere so when it does I will watch it with a big cup of tea and a giant slice of cake so I'm very looking forward to that. But. Um, doesn't matter. I've watched so much of what everyone else has had to say about it that I feel like I have already watched it. I wanted to take a look at this from an astrological point of view because it really does match what's going on in the sky. It's, it's quite incredible. So last month when I was looking at the Mars Rahu conjunction in Taurus, I said that that was seed freedom. And we did have some farmers protesting at that time. And that's really the context in which I was looking at this conjunction because it's in Taurus, there's farming there, food is there. So that was really the perfect thing to be thinking about. How has this manifested so far this month? It has really manifested in a giant family argument, which if you think about it, Mars in Taurus, you know when I do the mini readings and I'm sure many of you have heard me say this and especially if you've been following me for quite a while you'll know that when Mars is in your second house I will say something like be careful about how you speak to your family members right I do often say that and now what we have here is we have a very uh, big and visible family feud in the airways and the media is just all over it everyone's just been talking about this it's in the stars Mars and Rahu in Taurus that's definitely a family feud rather big one you know and I suppose Rahu could be indicating that foreign elements have been involved right so the press has been involved in what is really a private family matter so Rahu could be seen as being, you know, a media element here in Taurus, right? So this is pretty incredible. And I do notice that these two are often quite attuned to the sidereal Vedic system. I don't know if you remember, and I'll try and find the link uh, and, and share that link with you if I can. 
I did a video about how when Meghan Markle and Prince Harry left the royal family, they were eclipsed out of the royal family, right? They did it. They left the family exactly on an eclipse. So now here's the next big thing that they're doing. And again, they're perfectly in tune with the stars. They've decided to have the date of their interview. Now let's take a look at when the date was of this interview. I think it was the 7th of March. Uh, I think it was. So I had a look. I had a look at this in both of their charts. And I wanted to see, I wanted to get an understanding of was this a good idea? Was this something that they should have done? Because strategically, I think that this was not a good move. I, I, everything within me is saying that, oh, that, that I don't think they should have particularly done this. Um, I feel like the Oprah card is like an ace card that you keep up your sleeve and you don't play that unless you really, really have to kind of thing. They should have saved that for an emergency and not just spend it on uh, some of these, I, I kind of think they're small things, but I don't know. But this is all really interesting. So my mind was thinking in that way and I started to think of some other big interviews that we've seen happen in history and when did they happen and why? Is, is there an astrological theme that I can draw out of this? So I looked up Princess Diana's Panorama interview and I wanted to see when did that happen. So that happened 20th November 1995. And if we take a look at the chart, you'll notice she's in Sadisate period. How fascinating. Her Saturn is on her moon. And that is a time when you have to speak truth. Like you will have to, Saturn will make you speak the truth and it might be extremely uncomfortable. And it might not be a good thing, but you'll have to do it. Right, so we've got that panorama interview, 20th November 1995. Let's take a look at another one, Ellen DeGeneres interview. Now, when she came out on Oprah, that was a really big deal. That was a really big interview, really big thing. Let's take a look at her chart. So that was 30th April 1997. What do we see here again? Look at that, Saturn on the moon, right? She's at the height of Sadisati period. So I said to myself, all right, if I can find three, then for me, that's enough of a little bit of a pattern. I did find another one. I looked up Sarah Ferguson. I thought, let's check out her chart. She went on Oprah in 1996. Now, I couldn't find a date for when she went on Oprah. But how amazing. If you take a look at her chart, you'll see that Saturn is on her moon for that entire year. Okay, so there is definitely a pattern that is emerged. And it is this thing of... When Sadesati is happening, if you're suppressing truth or not speaking truth, that could be painful. And yeah, you, you might need uh, to, to, to speak, you know, Saturn, Saturn might make you speak and it might be very uncomfortable. You might have to speak to a lot of people, you know, the all, all is one, and it might be that big, right? So I started thinking about this, that, okay, let's take a look at what's happening for these two young people. Is there such a pressing need to have done this interview for either of them? And when I take a look at their charts, I don't see that that is the case. Let me just bring up their charts here now. I'm going to bring up the charts as I'm speaking, but let me um, have a look while I'm talking to you now. If I bring up there. How are we doing for time? We're not too bad. Because I really, what I think, okay, I've gone up to 2027. I'm looking quite far into the future. And that, look, I have, I've studied both of their charts. And what I will say, I'll say it very quickly because we are running out of time here. We do have more things to cover. I didn't see that there's a pressing need for them to speak truth or to do this in, in such a big broad public way even though it does it does beautifully match Mars Rahu in Taurus so it is in tune with nature but has it been a good thing for them strategically I don't think so and I think that they should have kept the Oprah card up their sleeve and only use that 
in emergencies, you know, unless it's, you really, really have to. Um, but again, you can kind of see, if you look at the birth charts, Mega Markle's Ketu is in the seventh house in Capricorn. She's very, very comfortable in the spotlight. I've said this on the channel before. I've said this in a few places, but oh, I might as well go through it now. She's very comfortable being in the spotlight. And this comfort will continue until age 42. When she's 42, that's Rahu maturation. And she'll really need to be in that first house. She will really need to be in that first house. Um, and to me, I tend to think that the ideal would be at 42 onwards, the ideal thing would be that she, and I'm looking at this in conjunction with her Rahu in her D9 chart as well. So I'm kind of looking at two things here. Ideally, she would start to become a more private and quiet individual who's devoting her life to service in a genuine and a very quiet sort of way, not in a big, loud, you know, you have a social media team of 30 people kind of way, not like that. And we can see why, we can see where the comfort in, in all of that is coming from. It is coming from the Ketu in Capricorn placement, that, that desire to have a massive, big life and big profile and a big team and a, all of that really really big but that's interestingly not going to serve her when i look at prince harry's chart it's fascinating because he's got rahu yes in a place of service uh and in taurus there in in the sixth house and it's fascinating because all this drama that she generates from her chart and her ketu placement for now it actually serves him and it's actually good for him. Isn't that fascinating? I like looking at these two together and studying are they a good couple for each other and I do think that they are. I think they are a very good couple but here's a little prediction that I will make on the channel which is um, that I do believe, I, I was clicking up through the years and I saw that come 2025 for a good couple of years that, that might be a tricky time for them as a couple where they might find that, um, because she's going to have Saturn, I think, seventh from the moon. I did look from the ascendant as well. I looked at Prince Harry. I think he's going to start his Sadisati phase. This could be a time where each of them individually will be needy emotionally. And if they're both down, neither is there to pick the other up. That's the kind of thing I'm seeing, and that could last for a couple of years. So it'll depend on a lot of things. It'll depend on what they create together and, and how they are as a couple. And there's so much to all of this. But I have identified that there could be a time where things could be a bit, um, a bit difficult for them. So it's, it's, it's really very interesting, all of this. But yeah, I also, the other thing I observed as I was watching the interview, was one of the things that came across in an overall sense was that I felt that um, Megan Markle, say for example, is not doesn't have much gratitude um, towards you know the, the royal family, and this thing about this thing came into my mind this concept that one of the things I observe from the little clips that I've seen is that she doesn't have a realization or an understanding that she is the one who's interchangeable in this situation. So what do I mean by this? So Oprah is there interviewing Prince Harry's wife, whoever that might be. Hers is the one role in this whole thing that is interchangeable, actually, right? In that she could have been Chelsea Davy, she could have been Cressida Bonus, she could have been someone else. And yet, it's, it's like the awareness of that is not there at all. And I was trying to figure that out astrologically. I was trying to see why is that? I wonder why there is no awareness of the fact that, um, that she's interchangeable. So, okay, so what do, I, what do I mean by this? What do I mean by this fact that, how, where, where do I get this from? In one of the clips, she says something about um, that I gave up my career for this. And, but she doesn't at all recognize that her career has skyrocketed just from her connection with these people. She has a huge amount 
to be grateful and you know the only reason that Oprah's there speaking with her is because she's married to Prince Harry if she wasn't and if she was doing her old career Oprah would never have any time to sit down with her and it's that fundamental lack of awareness um, of elements of reality of the fact that you're interchangeable of there's a lot here so I was trying to look astrologically okay what what's going on here and I was thinking about from Saturn's point of view and I realized no this is not a Saturn thing and I was thinking about the Sun and if you have a look at that Sun in the first house there now we're going to get some answers as to this concept of how she it's a total blind spot it's a total lack of awareness that she's the one that's interchangeable why is that because sun in the first house everybody revolves around you when you've got sun in the first house the whole world revolves around you and you are the king and, and or queen of your life you are you draw your authority only from yourself which also we see here astrologically uh, and the other thing about Rahu being here is that she's going to have difficulty She's either going to, when it comes to authority, she's either going to be under or above. So she's either going to um, kind of like underestimate her authority or she's going to overestimate her authority. And that's, that's really, really interesting. That scene here, and there are a couple of other things that she said that gave this away, which was like, one was about the curtsying, that, oh, I, di I didn't want to curtsy to the queen and I thought about that and I thought wow and I thought see if I have to meet someone how are we doing for time here 21 minutes doesn't matter I'll chat through I'm just gonna go for it because I did think about this and I thought about how the fact okay let's say I'm going to marry someone from a different culture I'm going to marry someone who's Japanese let's say and this lovely and I speak a bit of Japanese actually I still remember my high school Japanese uh, konnichiwa sushi oishi desu ne this sushi is delicious I'm ready to go. So I meet this Japanese guy and he says, we're going to meet grandma tomorrow. But the thing is, you've got to understand my grandma, she is the head of a mafia type situation. She hasn't personally knocked anyone off, but you know, several hundred years ago, her ancestors did and they stole some jewels and you're going to have to meet grandma. But the thing is, you're going to have to bow to grandma and I'll teach you how to bow, you know, and you have to wear a kimono, you have to have your hair in a bun and you have to do a green tea ceremony and all this stuff. If I'm in love with this man, which if we're going to get married, I would be, right? I would say, of course, teach me. I want to learn. You know, it wouldn't be, um, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be something I would uh, have a problem with. I don't have sun in the first house though. You see, if you have sun in the first house, you, you would be like, well, I'm not bowing to someone. I'm not gonna curtsy to some external person. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of things. I, I can't wait to watch the whole thing. I will watch the whole thing, but you know, um, and then I'll be able to really gauge and see what I think there. But so far what I saw is that and what I kind of feel is that, um, well, I definitely feel for the parents. I feel for Thomas Markle and Prince Charles enormously. And Lady Colin Campbell on her channel, she brought up this beautiful quote from King Lear, which um, was how sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. And I thought, yeah, that, I get that. that that's, and you've got to feel for the dads. You've got to feel for... Uh, and, and Doria Raglan too, if, if she, you know, she might like to say things to Megan, but I could imagine that, um, that neither parent would have much ability to guide or influence her uh, with, with these placements. This, this incredible first house that she's got here, I, I can't imagine that anybody can camera got cut. I think I was saying that I can't imagine that anybody other than her would have the ability to have authority over um, over, her, over her life, you know. But it has been really interesting. The other thing that I would like to say briefly before I get to the next news item is that um, I definitely don't think that Britain is a racist country at all. 
Okay, I lived there from 2004 to 2020. I came back last year because I haven't been so well. Back here in the family home in Sydney, Australia, I will be going back to my place in England. So all my stuff is there. I'm going home at some point. But in all my time there, and I am 100% brown, I'm qualified to talk about this. I'm 100% brown and I'm, you know, I turned up actually with far less than Meghan Markle. Uh, you know, I turned up with a suitcase and a portfolio of ads. I worked in advertising for a time and, you know, I, I made a life and it, it worked. I, I did it. And it's because the people were so warm and welcoming and inviting and uh, I love the British people. I really do uh, to me and they're eccentric and fun and you know humorous and so, so much good there I love it and you know what I watched after um, and I'm going to get to the next news topic don't worry I watched um, a brilliant interview with Muhammad Al-Fayed because on my YouTube dashboard all these royal things were popping up because I kept clicking on them and watching them and looking at the charts and doing this and that so I was having a good time with all that but then I watched I clicked on this one that was Muhammad Al-Fayed interview 60 minutes Australia I thought oh let's watch that I think it was 10 minutes something like that and now there is an interview that's worth watching I really enjoyed that because here's somebody who he said that the British royal family is racist as well. I don't know if the royal family is racist. I don't have a clue about that. I can tell you 100% that the British people are not racist. I know that for sure through my own life experience. And I'm far less than any of these, you know, celebrity people who would be respected and whatever else. I do know there are class issues there. I do know there's, yeah, I mean, there are issues, I, I know. But I personally didn't experience anything. But Mohammed Al Fayed's interview is really, really good because he also says that the British royal family is racist. But the the way he does it is is very um, convincing, and he doesn't come across as a victim. He doesn't come across as as anything too negative. He comes across as very genuine. He's he's a hurt man. He's a grieving man, and he's being very real and raw and honest. It's a really good interview and when he s speaks about the royal family being racist you sit up and you listen he also said I love the British people he said that I love that place and I feel the same I really do I just it's just such a fantastic place and I feel that she didn't give the people or the place enough time she as in Miguel Marco I feel like she didn't give the place any time and they did welcome her with open arms um, the press was not I didn't see any racism from the press. I thought they were, the press was really hard on Kate Middleton. They called her Weighty Katie for so long. And they were really hard on um, Sarah Ferguson as well. So, well, there you go. <laughs> I don't think they were that hard on Megan Markle. But anyway, let's take a look at the next bit of news, which I just wanted to bring up. Um, which was really to look at protests, all the protest activity that's going on. Let's take a look at that. So protest is happening in a massive way at the moment. And I do find this very interesting astrologically because I believe this is in direct response to, I'm going to bring up an Aries moon chart, this is in direct response to Saturn being in Capricorn. There are going to be protests while Saturn's in Capricorn, but I tell you when we're going to have massive protests, really, and it's really going to be on and needed and protest I think is going to be huge. I think that's when Saturn moves into Aquarius. That's coming soon, right? We are going to have, I think we're going to have to protest because otherwise uh, the control that's happening now, which is extreme, because it's Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. This is very, very extreme. It needs a counterbalance. It really, really does. So, you know, and one thing that I found, I'm gonna put it up on the screen, so protest typically looks like this, but it can also look like this. And I'm gonna put a link to this video of this ballerina dancing Swan Lake on ice below so that you can watch it and feel inspired. I was really inspired by this. I thought this was beautiful. She's basically protesting that, hey, don't ruin this beautiful natural landscape. 
I'm going to dance here and you can't ruin uh, this beautiful scene. I thought that was so brilliant because not all of us can go out physically and be in those crowds and protest. I can't, for example. Uh, my energy will run out after an hour or two. Like I'll probably, my energy will run out as soon as I get to the city and then I'll be like, I have to go home or something. So yeah, I would not be able at the moment due to health challenges, I would not be able to go and protest with everybody. But I'm very grateful to those who are doing that. Uh, it's an incredible service that needs to happen. And hopefully I build my strength up. And when Saturn moves into Aquarius, you know, I am able to join in in some way. I don't know. But I've been having a look at what's been going on. And there is this principle that Naomi Klein talks about, which is called the shock doctrine. And what this is about is that when people are in shock, governments pass heaps of regulations that people wouldn't normally agree with. And I think we've got a lot of that happening at the moment. Uh, apparently after the event at Capitol Hill, Jan 6, you know, after that event, nine states have introduced 14 anti-protest bills. The other thing that's been going on is while we've had the Meghan and Markle, a Meghan and Harry big interview thing go on, which I've admittedly talked about quite a bit, but astrologically it was very interesting. But that took up the airwaves. It dominated all the airwaves. And apparently in Britain, they are passing a whole load of regulations that uh, are designed to stop protest. So this is not good. And we've really got to do whatever it is that we can. And some of us are limited. So, you know, for me, what can I do? I guess I can talk about these things on this channel and that's really all that I'm doing. Look at that lovely ballerina. She is doing what she can in her way. And I think that each of us can do something, you know. Um, we've got Jupiter moving into Aquarius from April to September. Is that gonna be a time where there's more protest? I'm not 100% sure about that. I, I have been thinking about this. That is that going to be a big, massive protest time? It could be. Jupiter is going to be a lot happier in Aquarius. That is for sure. Jupiter is moving out of debilitation and into quite a good place where I do think Jupiter can be productive. I think there can be protests, but I actually think that this is more of a preparation time. So April to September is a preparation time for the collective to really gather and accumulate wisdom to be practicing protest potentially, to be figuring things out so that when Saturn enters Aquarius 2023 to 2025, we as a collective, we are good to go. We are good to change society and make sure that, you know, certain things uh, don't end up becoming regulations forever. You know, that is the really, big and important thing. We don't want to be stuck with these regulations for a really, really long time. Look at what happened with 9-11. 9-11 happens and then what all of us, and, and I mean that, that whole thing was just, okay, so we're, we're really expected to believe that a few blokes from Afghanistan who were training up on Cessnas somehow got into a Boeing and did the damage that they did. Okay, so, so we have to believe that. And then we have to, for the rest of time, you know, every time I fly, I have to take off shoes and belt and this and that. And I'm not complaining that that's too much for me. That's very easy for me to do. But it's the loss of freedom and it's how we're treated and, uh, and why, you know, why, right? It, it's, it's for something that may not have even been a real or credible thing, you know? And I feel like the same thing is going on now. There are so many doctors who are piping up and speaking. I signed the Barrington Declaration. I think it's called Barrington Declaration. There's also um, a wonderful man who I'll link to below, uh, this Dr. Bosch. I'll, I'll show you his video as well. I'll write that down because I wasn't planning to talk about any of this. He has come out and he's saying that this, we're, we're going about this pandemic all wrong and I yeah I understand I I hear him you know and I think that um, at some point 
enough is enough. It, it, it's, it's because of Saturn in Capricorn. We have a reason and we have a limit and we have a duration. It's not going to be like this forever. But I think the Saturn in Aquarius time, we have to fight and that is going to make the difference. And by the time we get Saturn into Pisces, which is going to be a few years away, by then I think we should have a beautiful new world. I really do. I, I think it's coming, but it's going to take a bit of time. Okay, let's take a look at the, um, I've spoken, I've waffled a lot guys today. I hope that's been all right, but I wanted to talk about the news and what's been going on. Let's take a look at, oh no, we have a lot more to do. We're going to do the stars in brief. Okay, so gosh, this is a jam-packed episode. What do we have going on in terms of the planetary energy for the whole collective? Let's take a look at this now. So faster moving planets, we've got Mercury, Venus, Sun. They are sweeping from Pisces into Aries. So this is going to be a great time for you to work with your creativity, for example, your dream state, uh, and defining your individual perspective and how it relates to the whole, to all of us. It's a great time for any artists out there. What about the movement of Mars? We've got Mars leaving Taurus and entering Gemini April 14th. I'm going to be talking about that in all of the mini readings. So stick around. You're going to find out exactly how that affects you. Now, the big event really is Jupiter. 6th April, moving into Aquarius. Um, Jupiter absolutely loves being in Aquarius. Yeah, I mean, he does. It's a good place. It's a good place, definitely. So collectively, this placement will mean the ability to accumulate lots of data to strategize how we should be shaping society going forward. And I do think that's what this is going to be about. I don't necessarily think it's going to be about protests. I think there will be protests, but I don't particularly think it's about protests. Jupiter being in Aquarius, I think it's more about the accumulation of wisdom and data so that when the time comes to act, we're very much ready and we know what it is we need to do. Yeah, I've got the note here, we're being given an opportunity to get wise about what we want out of society. Let's take a look at the moons. So we've got a beautiful new moon in Revati Pisces. Gorgeous. Now this is 12th April <coughs> 2021. Sorry about that. I've still got a bit of a cough. I had a cough last week. It's nothing major. I was out in the rain chasing these brush turkeys in the garden. It's a long story. Okay, our place looks like Lord of the Flies at the moment, We're running around with sticks. Anyway, uh, so we've got a new moon in Revati, Pisces, 12th of April. This is going to be a very dreamy, beautiful, lovely energy. Really nice thing. If you can spend a bit of time to light a fire and burn up some things, so, you know, write your stuff down on paper and then burn it up, right? That is a great thing to do at every new moon. And I do that. Mum and I do that. We'll put a little fire out in the you know, backyard in a very safe way. Obviously, in Australia, you have to be very safe with fire. We certainly are. Um, but, you know, it's a good thing to do. And, and that way, you don't have to call Oprah. You know, you can just, you just burn it up, right? Um, okay, so let's... Full moon is in Swathi, Libra. So that is 27th April. What's this full moon going to be about? Okay, this is a nice full moon. I do like this full moon. This is a time of... You know culmination you're going to realize some things about where you are free in your life where you feel free and where you are independent of others in your life you're going to come to massive understandings about that uh, on this full moon 27th april check near where you are because that's the date for sydney australia but um there's also a really nice diplomatic energy available at this time as well. So that's the overview for the stars in brief. Now, what I'm going to do is take you through the mini readings. I hope good. I still got space on the memory card. Excellent. All right. Aries moon. Welcome Aries moon. Or you might be Aries ascendant. Welcome. Let's take a look at the stars for you. So on the 6th of April, We've got Jupiter moving into your 11th house until the 15th of September. This is a nice long transit. You're going to have a retrograde in there and everything. So when we have the retrograde period, come back to the channel. I will tell you when that's on and if there's a significant meaning. But overall, oh, this is a beautiful transit. Lucky you, Aries moon. Enjoy this. Enjoy these several months from 
Yeah, April to September, you've got a really good thing going on here. So you've got great energy here to spend with your children. It might fire up your creativity. Great time to expand your business or pursue new clients. Opportunities for new work and our projects should definitely come at this time. On 14th April, you have Mars stepping into your third house. And again, this is such a great transit. So you've got, you're one of the three lucky signs. I can tell you that. Uh, this should give you courage to go after those new opportunities to literally make things happen in a hands-on way. So Aries Moon, you have got great energy behind you. I wish you well. I hope you can really make the most of the energy that's coming up for you. All right, so we've now got Taurus Moon here. Welcome, Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, on 6th April, Jupiter moves into your 10th house until 15th September. So this could have you feeling a little bit emotional as Jupiter is far away from his exaltation house. Yeah, Jupiter does miss being away from that fourth house. So <coughs> you might be feeling a bit emotional because of this transit. You might be missing home, actually. If you are far away from the place where you live, you're gonna miss home during this transit. Great time to strategize career for the long term. So this is, he's there in that 10th house. You've got the ability to strategize what you want from your career and be making steps towards creating that, making that happen. It's not so much about the action, it's not so much about doing it's about strategizing gaining the wisdom gaining the insights what do you really want and to strategize that this is a good time for that great time to strategize career for the long term say the next 12 years yeah absolutely see for example where I've got my Saturn right now it's in a place where it's causing me a bit of grief with my health so I'm thinking in my head and all the work that I'm doing is I'm thinking okay I'm going to create great health not just for now, but for the next 30 years, because I'm working with Saturn. Now here with Jupiter, I do think you've got the ability to work with Jupiter and think in, a, think in terms of 12 years and think in terms of, okay, how do I want to strategize? What do I want to do with my career? Where do I want to be? Where would I love to be 12 years from now? That's a really good thing for you to do, Taurus Moon. Um, you can be like a sponge, picking up the wisdom you need for your career going forward. And this works really well with your Saturn in the ninth. Yeah, this is good actually. Because that's a, a place where Saturn is quite intellectually focused. And he's, you can be thinking about authority and where you are the authority of your own life as well. Now on the 14th of April, Mars moves into your second house. So yes, I, if you watch my introduction, look at that. You got the Meghan Markle placement, <laughs> right? Be careful what you say to family. Mars in the second house, that is going to be important for the month of April, but I'm sure you're gonna be fine. Just don't ring Oprah. Instead of that, write it on paper, burn it up, that kind of thing, you'll be fine. All right, Taurus Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now gonna welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now on the 6th of April, Jupiter moves into your ninth house until 15th September. So this is a nice transit. This is a good time to grow professionally. You'll be able to make money, you'll be able to make gains, be seen, be recognized. <clears throat> it's also a really good time to heal your relationship with your father. Okay, so if you have any issues, and it doesn't matter if dad's no longer on the earth plane, right? You can work with his spirit. You can, because when people cross over, all is forgiven. It really is. And if you want to learn more about any of that kind of thing, I recommend um, Anita Murjani, Dying to Be Me. It's a really, really good book where she describes in a lot of detail what it's like on that other side. I don't know if you can hear it. That's a cockatoo, by the way, if you can hear that bird. <clears throat> right, so let's take a look. What else have we got going on here? This is a great transit. Jupiter really does like being in the ninth house. It's a fire, you know, that's, yeah, he, he loves being there. Fire sign, uh, fire house, I should say. It's a great time to heal your relationship with your father. And if you're a young man, you might even start considering what it'd be like to be a dad, right? That might start to, to enter into your mind. 
and you might get strategizing around that or, or working out your feelings around that, right? And getting ready for that one day. So on 14th April, Mars moves into your first house. So this can be a, an interesting transit. <clears throat> there could be a rise in expenses, could potentially be tension with mom. Okay, so you wanna be careful in that relationship with your mother and it might be a little bit draining on your energy. So just take it easy. If you find that you're a bit tired or, or running on empty, try and get some time out for yourself. All right, Gemini Moon, thank you so much for stopping by. We are now gonna welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. You could also be Cancer Ascendant, by the way. I should also remember to say that. I, I tend to forget, I always just welcome the Moon people, but you know, we might have some Ascendant people here too. Uh, 6th of April, Jupiter moves into your eighth house until 15th September. I will tell you, this is not the best transit, I know we, when it's a long transit like this, we would love for it to be in a great place, but don't worry, you'll have nice transits from the other planets. So just keep checking in with me each month and you'll find that there's a good, there's a good transit for you. Check in with Venus. Venus should be nice for you. Uh, I haven't checked that, but let's have a look at what we've got here with Jupiter. Yeah, I've got the note here. Be careful to avoid becoming too enmeshed with family. Take time and steer clear of arguments. There can also be a drain on your energy, so do take care of your health as well. Now, on the 14th of April, Mars moves into your 12th house yet again. Yeah, look at that. They're both in these watery places. And what I'm discovering is planets in water places, it's not good for your health. That's what I'm really discovering. I'm discovering it quite literally <laughs> um, through experience and yeah. On the 14th of April, Mars moves into your 12th house. This is not great for your health or energy. Good time to go slow. Good time to work with Saturn. Work with Saturnian energy. When the going gets tough, <clears throat> work with Saturn. Build those little habits, the little tiny things you can do each day just to incrementally improve. Don't be ambitious, right? If And I heard this on this lady's video. She was talking about how trauma gets trapped in the body. Let me give you her name just quickly. I don't know why, but this might be relevant for someone. Let me, I bookmarked it just recently. How to release trauma stored in the body. This lady is absolutely lovely. Hang on. Her name is Suki Baxter, Whole Body Revolution. So this might be relevant for one of you out there. She said, when you go slow, you're actually going fast. And I love that. I, I'm sure she works with Saturnian energy in some way because she's very wise and very responsible and a lot of great qualities, a lot of great content coming from her. So um, good time to go slow. <clears throat> and if you go slow, train yourself that I'm actually going fast. Recognize that, you know, when, and when it is slow, work with it. Uh, don't fight against it. Cancer Moon, I think you're gonna gain a lot out of this transit, actually, if you learn to work with all these things. And if you, you, you come out of this, really learning how to go with the flow. And you'll be able to change your speed as the speeds around you change, you know? So anyway, Cancer Moon, thank you so much for joining. We're now gonna welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now on the 6th of April, Jupiter moves into your seventh house until 15th September. This is an excellent transit. It's a really great time to make progress on your business, on your public persona. It's a great time to put out a lot of social media content. It's a great time to be visible, to be seen, right? Really good time to get out there. On the 14th of April, you've got Mars moving into your 11th house. Oh my God, yeah, no, this is brilliant again. Um, great time to make money, get projects off the ground, good for opportunities. Rahu is in the 10th. Yeah, I, we've talked about this. We have talked about, I know you, Leo Moon. We've talked a lot about this. Everything's career here for you right now. It's fantastic. You've got Saturn in the 6th. I will say Saturn in the 6th, you might have some health challenges. So work within your limits. But it's very good. And I do feel like whatever your limits are, whatever you do put out, it should 
it should gain momentum it should do well in these coming months you've got a lot of great energy behind you so see how you get on with that leo moon so thank you so much for joining <coughs> we are now going to welcome virgo moon virgo moon thank you so much for joining so now on the 6th of april we've got jupiter moving into your sixth house until the 15th of september so i will tell you this is not a very good transit uh, it expands, Jupiter will expand what he touches and <clears throat> in this house there are lots of challenges. Okay, so if you put Jupiter in this house, he expands the issues, right? So this is not one of the better places for Jupiter to be. Um, be wise, be Jupiterian, okay? So, you know, let's use his energy while it's here. And let's use it the right way so it's going to be important for you to think before speaking to strategize to be wise be all the jupiterian things and i think that should counter um, say for example the content of that sixth house don't focus so much on the content focus on who's there and that's jupiter and be jupiter you should be fine <clears throat> let's take a look here so You'll also want to look after your health a little bit extra as well. Jupiter in the sixth is not one of the best placements, but you know, I'm going through, I've got Saturn in a position right now and it's terrible for health and I'm really experiencing that. So, but you know, weirdly, I actually feel like my health is better than it's ever been. Even though there are like last week I had to not do anything for like the whole week and you know, I, I'm going through some rough bits, but it's getting me to clean up my diet. It's getting me to transform things. It's getting me to exercise every day. It's getting me to do all these kind of things that I never really did before because I didn't have time. And now I do have time and I'm actually loving it. I'm actually really enjoying it. So if you're going through anything like that, use the time. The, the, you know, if there's extra time you're being given or because you know, you've been a bit run down and you have to slow down, enjoy that slow time. Um, on the 14th of April, Mars, if you can, I know it's not easy sometimes because there are bills to pay and I know everything's quite difficult, but um, yeah, I've got the same thing too. Uh, let's have a look, 14th April, what's going on with Mars? Is this any good? Do you know, I think your Mars transit is, is quite okay. Mars is going to move into your 10th house. I like this transit. I do think Mars does well in this place. Traditionally, it says, you know, when you look up the writings on this placement, it says things like you have to be wary of your superiors at work. Be careful that you don't go over their heads and things like that. But honestly, I think it's, there's potential for you to make progress uh, in your career in the month of April. And I think it's going to be May as well. <coughs> Mars is, is um, going to be in this place for a little while. So, you know, I, I do think career can be quite a good focus but check in with me in the months to come because i will be looking at venus and other planets you'll have some really lovely energy somewhere so don't worry but virgo moon thank you so much for joining and if you'd like you can check your ascendant sign as well okay you might find that you've got a better thing going or you can have a look at where your sun is that kind of thing and that will balance out what you've got going on this month but thank you so much for joining and we are now going to meet Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Or you might be Libra Ascendant as well. Thanks so much for stopping by. So let's take a look. On the 6th of April, we've got Jupiter moving into your fifth house until the 15th of September. Oh, this is beautiful. This is a great transit. It's great for romance. It's great for meeting someone new. <coughs> you might even be able to rekindle something old because Jupiter will be in retrograde. So, yeah, this could be very nice, Libra Moon. Uh, great time with children. Creatively, you're going to be on fire. This is fantastic. Great time to be seen. Great time to publish lots of content if you do stuff on social media. Now, on the 14th of April, we've got Mars moving into your ninth house. So this is not great for your energy. Uh, yeah, look after your health. It, I, I read it in the 
research for this placement that it can be um, things like body aches and pains as well. So be careful, um, just take time out if you're feeling that things are getting a bit too much. And thank goodness, I mean, the, the, the way the world is, the world is a lot more understanding for health challenges now. So that's, it's actually, there are some good things <laughs> that are going on. So, <clears throat> whereas before, I remember times when the world was not uh, accommodating of health challenges because I've had health challenges all my life. And, you know, if I was sick at some of the fancy companies I've worked at and I would come to work the next day and I would get greasy looks in the elevator like, you know, who are you to be sick? And it's like, wow. I mean, people won't be doing that anymore. I don't think. I think people are a lot more respectful of, um, of sickness and all these things now. So there are some... Good things coming out of this time weirdly but anyway i went on a tangent just there um let's take a look at mars mars moves into your ninth house yeah not great for your energy look after your health so there might be some blocks on the way on your way to success be careful how you speak to seniors at work yeah definitely i was a little bit like virgo moon just now but libra moon you have got a lot to look forward to when it comes to Jupiter. I'm so happy for you. You're one of the lucky signs that's having a good Jupiter transit. So enjoy that. Enjoy that a lot. Thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now on the 6th of April, Jupiter moves into your fourth house until 15th September. Okay, this is a bit of a mixed transit. So on the one hand, Jupiter is happy to be in the fourth house because that's his exaltation space, right? But in Aquarius, how I'm seeing this is there might be a little bit of stop-start feel to the energy. This is not, um, it's not the best, transit. it's mixed as I say. There'll be some good through this transit, some not so good. And the other thing is it does depend as well very much on your personal unique chart. So that has to be assessed as well. So this could be really amazing for you. The other thing you want to do is you want to have a look at your ascendant or your sun or something like that as well. So I've got the note here, be careful with property, family and travel. On the 14th of April, Mars moves into your eighth house. This is the same story, though he's in his own house where he's very comfortable, he's in Gemini. And you know we know he doesn't get on with the young prince, Mercury. So. Um, it could be a little bit of drain on your energy. Again, it's eighth house, it's water. Mars isn't the happiest to be there, so watch out for your energy and your health. And this is the thing, you've got these two big planets in water signs. And I do find that when we've got big, heavy planetary energy in water signs, it can really take a toll on your health. I am personally discovering that. Uh, yeah, that, that's definitely what's, what's happening in my world. But you know, you've still got Saturn there in the third, don't you? Which is very, very good. So be making the most of that. I mean, look, if Saturn's sweet, then a lot of things don't matter, right? So uh, you've got that really nice transit that you're dealing with. So see how you go with Jupiter and Mars energy, but don't push it, especially when it comes to your health. Know that you've got Jupiter and Mars not in the best places for health. And so um, take it easy, rest, don't push, don't, don't overwork. Okay, thanks so much Scorpio Moon. We are now gonna welcome Sagittarius Moon. Sagittarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. We might be Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Sun. So on the 6th of April, we've got Jupiter moving into your third house until 15th September. Jupiter does okay here. It's not the best transit, but but it's not bad. Um, it's a really good time to gain wisdom about your own self, about what it takes to make you feel courageous. <clears throat> when do you feel courageous? How do you feel courageous? What, what is it that you need to do? This is a doing house. So, but you can gain wisdom about how you operate as an individual, right? And also how you operate within a group as well. That's another thing that you, you can be gaining wisdom about at this time. What makes you want to create big things? So it's kind of, you're working at a different, in a different way. So rather than creating the big things or feeling the pressure to do that, maybe you can explore and look into what makes you want to be creative, right? 
This is really interesting energy. What makes you want to be creative and do you have the courage to <clears throat> put your creativity out into the world? It's not easy. Uh, I find it hard sometimes, you know, to put things out into the world. I'm like, oh no, I'm going to get bad comments and this and that. I go through all that. Let's have a look here. What else have you got going on? Rahu is great in the sixth. Yeah, this is good. You can strategize about business as well. Rahu's in the sixth. This is fantastic. So I think you should have some impulse to go after things, to go after opportunities, to create, to expand your career or your service in the world. <clears throat> so Rahu energy is good there. Great time to serve. Great time to serve the collective. Great time to serve the all is one. And let's have a look on the 14th of April, Mars moves into your seventh house. Yeah, so this is a good time to be careful with how you speak to partners and or business partners, okay? Um, I've got the note here, take time, be Jupiterian, be wise and speak after thinking. <clears throat> Don't be in a rush to do anything business wise. You've got some hot rush energy in these corporate career kind of places around in the sixth there mars in the seventh you might want to act impulsively or do something in a, in a rush or quickly slow down think about it be wise be, be jupiterian right that's what, what's a good thing to do at this time but otherwise i think these transits should be quite nice sagittarius moon so thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome Capricorn Moon. Capricorn Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now on the 6th of April, Jupiter moves into your second house until the 15th of September. This is so good. I am so happy for you, Capricorn Moon. Yes, this is good because you are going through a tough time. I know you are. I know that it hasn't been easy for you. So this is a really, really nice transit. I think there's some rays of starlight giving you a gift here. So wealth is possible, recognition from society is possible. You can improve your psychic abilities as well <coughs> with this placement. So this is a really good time to be working on any occult gifts or anything like that. Good health. You could even have a baby if that's something that you want or if that's important to you. So on the 14th of April, Oh my gosh, this is so good. I'm so happy for you. Mars moves into your sixth house. Yay, yay, yay. I'm, this is good. I've got, yeah, three exclamation points here. This is, um, I'm happy for you because I know you're going through tough stuff. So on the 14th of April, Mars moves into your sixth house. Excellent transit again. This is great to beat competition. Uh, good for legal cases. Things should go in your favor. Wealth should be on the up. Your health should be really good with this placement as well. <clears throat> so please um, do make the most of these beautiful energies that are here for you, Capricorn Moon. Thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now gonna welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Or you might be Aquarius Ascendant or Aquarius Sun. Let's take a look at what's going on for you. So on the 6th of April, Jupiter moves into your first house until the 15th of September. This can be a bit tough on your health. Um, plus Saturn is in your, yeah, Saturn is 12 from your ascendant right now. So you've got health concerns and energy drains just kind of mildly ongoing, okay? Uh, so, so you're just going to want to take care of your health. I'm not saying that anything's going to happen. That's not it. But it's just you don't want to overwork and you don't want to burn out. You don't want to do too much, okay? Um, this is a great time to become very spiritual. This is a beautiful transit. This is the time to read those spiritual texts that have been on your shelf. I've got one in my Kindle right now and I'm reading it. It's, uh, I think it's Freedom from the Known Krishnamurti. I'm reading like a few pages every night before I sleep. It is so good. It is really good. And that has been stuck in my Kindle unread for like, I don't know how long, like maybe two or three years or something ridiculous like that. I just never got round to it because I'm always picking up a new book and yeah, anyway, I'm into it now. So, and I read that along with Vandana Shiva's um, Oneness Versus One Percent. So I read both at the same time. But great, great time for you to be getting into your, deep into your spiritual texts or 
listening to great audios or tuning into really great teachers, you know, really re-listening to those round ass lectures or whatever it is that you love, right? So <clears throat> on the 14th of April, we've got Mars moving into your fifth house. So your children's health may not be so great. Uh, go easy on the kids, okay? Um, if you're stuck indoors spending a lot of time with your kids and you know, go easy on them. Keep a check on your diet and finances, but this should be good for creativity though. So see if there are any creative bursts uh, and, and you know, you might be quite driven. You might be quite you know, coming from your masculine side, right? From your Mars energy. So look out for that Aquarius moon. All right. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Pisces moon. Pisces moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. <clears throat> now on the 6th, of April we've got Jupiter moving into your 12th house until 15th September. Okay this is a bit of a mixed transit here so your expenses might be higher, you might have to travel, you might not want to, uh, you might want to in which case <laughs> it's good so hence the mixed vibe that we've got going on here. This is really good, I'll tell you where this is good for, really great for your spirituality, really great for solitude. So if you're able to carve out some time be on your own, be in nature. I was just telling Aquarius Moon, great time to be reading your spiritual texts and be reading and rereading. You know when you read a line and you just, you're like, wow, and then, be, and I highlight them in my Kindle and then I go back and I reread them again. And it's so good to just reread and to really let certain things sink in deeply. That's how we learn, you know, that's how I learn. Uh, yeah, I learned through repetition over long stretches of time, it seems. Um, this is not such a great transit for business. Okay, so I mean, look, we can see here that the, the highlight really of your Jupiter transit from April to September, it's a very spiritual time. And it's the time that you can, and I know there are many artists who are Pisces Moon, you can get a lot of ideas, you can bring a lot of things in, bring them into a holding space. You may not be able to execute them straight away. I've got so many things, I've got so many half written or quarter written scripts or so many little things that I'm meant to do. They're all in a holding space. And as soon as I get the energy, I'm going to birth them, I'm going to make them happen. But this could be a time when you're kind of up in the higher chakras and you're bringing down a lot of stuff. You park it and then you'll be able to birth them when you've got the better transits and when you've got time. Uh, so yeah, not a great transit for business. Good time to get wise about what it is that you want. So as I say, strategizing high level plans, bringing things from up there, but just parking them, right? <clears throat> uh, on the 14th of April, Mars moves into your fourth house. So think before speaking right, to your close family. Uh, don't feel the need to call Oprah. Keep keep the Oprah Ace card up your sleeve. Don't don't spend it too easily. Um, be careful of your health. Be careful of your mother's health. Be careful if dealing with property matters. So, Pisces Moon, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all those of you who do. There are a few of you who do actually watch the whole thing, and thank you so much for that. I, I do that as well. I, there are some astrologers I will watch like the whole thing, even the signs that aren't mine and all that kind of thing. I do that too. So thank you to everyone who comes and watches these videos. Thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. By the way, guys, I'm really behind on the comments. I'm going to get to everyone's comments as soon as I can. So please know that if I don't answer your comment, it's only just because I'm too busy or I'm engaged or I'm doing something or I'm strategizing or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm elsewhere. But uh, I really want to thank you so much. You know, you guys mean a lot to me and um, every time I get a message from you guys, I just, uh, it makes my day. <laughs> so thank you so much for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you next time.